Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about the IEEE standard for floating point arithmetic that is IEEE 754. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we are going to be briefly introduced to IEEE 754 standards. But before diving straight to the point, let's try to understand why do we need these standards. Now, if you remember, while we were studying about numbers, we came across the fixed point and the floating point numbers. And once we were done with the fixed point integers, we started our journey of learning about the fractions and the floating point representations. Now, while studying about these, we came across the actual place values of decimal and binary number systems. And thereafter, we observed how the floating point numbers used to be stored in the computer in the early days of computation. Well, this particular method was impractical to be implemented. Due to this reason, we opted for the signed exponent mantissa format. Now, the problem associated with this format was a particular number can actually be represented in different types in signed exponent format, leading towards confusion. And that was the reason why we needed the normalization. Now, we also have seen the explicit and the implicit normalization. And during the study of that, we observed the implicit normalized form is more precise than the explicit one. Observe, we are actually trying to figure out a proper representation for representing the floating point numbers. Now, although we have come across still explicit and implicit normalization, however, the required bits to store a particular floating point number is yet to be fixed. And in this particular regard, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers comes at rescue. Basically, they have specified the particular standard 754 for representation of the floating point numbers. Now, honestly, this is not new to us. If you remember, while we studied about the binary codes, we came across the ASCII and the EBCDIC codes. There, we also saw that the ASCII is of 7 bits and EBCDIC is of 8 bits. Now, the question is, who specified these bits for us? Coming to ASCII, the 7 bits of ASCII was specified by ANSI or American National Standard Institute. Now, coming to EBCDIC, the specification that these will be of 8 bits, this particular decision was made by IBM. Basically, what I am trying to say is, whenever some standards are specified, there must be some organizations behind it. And similar to that, IEEE is responsible for the standardization of the floating point numbers. Now, IEEE 754 is actually a technical standard for floating point arithmetic established in 1985 by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Now, honestly, I don't really want to bore you with all these historical details. Nonetheless, I do want to mention the milestones in this particular regard. So, the first standard of IEEE 754 was developed in 1985 and it was named as IEEE 754 1985. Now, these particular standards were revised in the year of 2008 and the latest revision was done in the year 2019. Now, over this time period, IEEE 754 actually defined quite a lot of standards. So, we will get to know about them one after the another. So, the first one is binary 16. Here, the 16 stands for the number of bits specified for this particular standard. Now, binary 16, this standard is commonly known as half precision. Now, here, for significant bits, we have 11 bits. Now, what are significant bits? This is actually the accumulation of the sign bit and the mantissa portion, which in case of binary 16 or half precision is 11. Now, think about it. If 11 bits are specified for the sign and the mantissa portion, how many bits will be specified for the exponent bits? It is going to be 5 because in total, we have 16 bits, isn't it? Now, for binary 16 or half precision, we have the exponent bias as 15. And finally, the organization of bits is something like this. That is, the MSB is the signed bit. Thereafter, 5 bits are specified for the biased exponent. And finally, the remaining 10 bits are used for the mantissa portion. Now, let me illustrate how the biased exponent works in case of IEEE 754 standards. As you can see, here for exponent, we have 5 bits. So, using this, we will obtain 2 raised to the power 5, that is 32 pattern, right? Now, considering unsigned numbers, this will be 0 to 31. 
Basically, this is the range in terms of unsigned numbers. Now, if we are going to use 2's complement, in that case, the range of values that we could have obtained using 5 bits is going to be minus 16 to plus 15, correct? Where the pattern for 0, that is all 0, would have represented the exponent minus 16. And on the other hand, the pattern for 31, that is all 1's, would have represented the positive exponent plus 15. However, this particular range is not followed in case of IEEE 754 standards. Instead, the range which is covered by the exponent bias is from minus 14 to plus 15. And the reason behind that is, the first pattern that is all zeros and the last pattern that is all ones, these two patterns are actually used to represent something else, which we will get to learn about in the next session. Anyway, for now, just remember this, if the exponent bias is 15, then the minimum exponent is going to be minus 14, that is 1 less than this value. And the maximum exponent will be positive 15, that is this value only. So this is how in case of IEEE 754 standard, the biased exponent works. Now coming to the next one, it is binary 32, which is commonly known as single precision. And this one specifies 24 bits for significant bits. And since 24 bits are combinedly representing the sign and mentisa, Therefore, 32 minus 24, that is 8 bits, will be used for exponent. And since 8 bits are being used for exponent, the exponent bias is going to be 127. Therefore, coming to the organization of bits, it is going to be something like this. The MSB will dedicate the sign bit. Thereafter, next 8 bits will be for the biased exponent. And finally, 23 bits will be specified for the Mentisa portion. Coming to the next one, it is called binary 64, which is commonly known as double precision, where 53 bits are specified for the significant and 11 bits are used for exponent, which also has the exponent bias of 1023. And the organization of bits are something like this, where you can see the MSB is again dedicated for the sign bit and thereafter 11 bits are used for exponent. And finally, the remaining 52 bits are being used to represent the Mentisa portion. Now coming to the next standard, it is called binary 128. Basically 128 bits are used in this particular standard, which is commonly known as quadruple precision, which specifies 113 bits for significant and 15 bits for exponent, having the exponent bias as 16383. Now coming to the organization of the bits, observe, here also the sign bit is specified by the MSB. Thereafter, 15 bits are dedicated for the exponent and finally, 112 bits are dedicated for the Mentisa. Finally, the last one is known as binary 256 and from the name only, we get to know that 256 bits will be dedicated in this particular standard, which is commonly known as octuple precision and from this 256 bits, 237 bits are used for the significant, remaining 19 bits are used for the exponent leading towards the exponent bias of 262143. Now finally, the organization of bits is something like this, where just like the other ones here also, the MSB is specifying the sign bit. Thereafter, the next 19 bits are dedicated for the exponent. And finally, the remaining 236 bits are dedicated for the Mentisa. So these are the floating point standards specified by IEEE 754. So in this session, we learnt about the different IEEE 754 standards. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn a little bit more about the IEEE single and double precisions. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.